Borsalino debuted on the global side of One Piece Treasure Cruise on the 22nd of December 2016. This was Global's Christmas celebration, bringing along a new batch of marine characters into One Piece Treasure Cruise from the time skip. The marines included in this batch of characters included Sentomaru of the Axe, Navy HQ Officer, Smoker, G5 Navy HQ Vice Admiral, Tashigi, G5 Navy HQ Captain, Maynard the Pursuer, Navy HQ Vice Admiral, and Shark Cutter Bastille, Navy HQ Vice Admiral. And a new Sugo Fest exclusive character that aimed to launch his special during crucial moments in battle to gain a higher attack multiplier. He also assisted in reducing your character's special charge time as the captain to reduce the amount of time spent during quests. This character's special would allow your slasher and your shooter characters to get a full board of matching slots, as well as healing your crew during a pinch. Introducing Borsalino. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. So thank you very much for watching yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. This episode is actually coming out like the day after Christmas. So once again, give you guys a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays. Thank you very much for watching this YouTube channel for so long. And I appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving to this series in particular. So hopefully you guys have a safe and happy holiday period. But let's jump into this video this week, which is going to be covering Kizaru's batch, which actually introduces a couple of key rare recruit characters. Sentomaru is actually not awful. I have used this character a couple of times. Sentomaru, Int, Striker, Slasher, Captain ability, doesn't matter, but it uh, has the Limit Break ability, which was used a little bit later on to resist Special Reverse, and then the uh, Special on your Stage 3 to do fixed damage to a single enemy, and then reduce the cooldowns of your Captains by two turns. There wasn't really too many characters back in the day that would re reduce cooldowns by two turns with a Special ability, so this was a very valuable effect to have, but just overall didn't see that much play, unfortunately. Speaking of useful rare recruits, G5 Smoker might be one of the most powerful rare recruit characters that had released. He wasn't like a, a character that would help you clear very difficult content, but he was such a niche character that only fulfilled one role, and he was like one of the only characters that could do it for a really long time. He's a dex striker driven captain effect, would boost the attack of striker and driven by 2.25. Recovery of all your characters is, re is reduced by 50%. If this character becomes your captain in the middle of the island, reduces damage received by 30% and would boost the attack of striker and driven by about three times instead so for rare recruit character that's a very good captain effect and then his special ability would do dex damage to one enemy and swaps this unit for your captain for two turns the key thing there is that it swaps it for two turns and the the main usage of this character was to use the special ability before being activated on an enemy preemptive attack to switch your captain with one of your crewmates and because this character was already activated as a captain swap the enemy Enemy would not allow you to swap. This was very useful for like Raid Shigi, for example, or very useful for Raid Fujitora when that eventually came out. This character was very good for that, and anytime there has been a captain swap mechanic in a quest, Smoker has always been on the table as a usable character for that fight. The next Roku character is Tashigi, who is a quick slasher cerebral. Captain effect would boost the attack of slasher and cerebral by 1.6 with a 1.3 recovery boost. But then again, if you have a slasher and a cerebral character, like the two classes on one unit, it would actually stack the attack multiplier together. So 2.56, a little bit too niche for my liking. Special ability would do quick damage to all enemies and then boost the color affinity of slasher and cerebral characters by 1.5 for two turns. This is actually the first uh, color affinity special that we have seen. I'm not too sure when Raid Akainu actually came out because I believe Raid Akainu was the first color affinity unit in the game but this is the first rare recruit that we've come across so far in the series that has been a color affinity booster so that's actually really good and depending on what type of content we play today this special ability might actually be pretty useful the next character is Maynard the Pursuer a Psy slasher powerhouse character with a pretty bad captain effect but a special ability that would do type damage and also delay all enemies for one turn a pretty basic special ability not a big fan of this unit. I have used him a couple of times, mainly as just a stat stick for a slashing team or a powerhouse team. Uh, though not really that good in terms of his abilities. The last one here is the Shark Cutter Bastille. Uh, this character is 
very, very interesting. Strength Slasher Driven, Captain Effect, would boost the attack of all characters by two times after the 15th hit in the chain, and then by three times after the 30th hit in the chain. Another combo hit style unit. Then he had a special ability that would do type damage to all enemies, and then boost the attack of all characters by two times after you had reached the 30th hit in the combo chain. Uh, that was way too difficult to get. Reaching 30 combo hits is ridiculously hard and uh, was basically never saw play. I believe he had an interesting support effect, if I remember. Yeah, after, after after the 20th hit, you get a 1.5 attack boost. Like, that is interesting, and depending on the situation, like, this could maybe be used, but only attaching to Fujitora and Maynard, like, it's, it's a bit of a whatever kind of effect. But uh, yeah, very, very interesting unit overall. Finally, we can talk about the Sugofest exclusive of the batch being Borsalino, otherwise known as Kizaru, who is a Psy slasher shooter with a captain ability that would reduce the cooldowns by one at the start of the quest, boost the attack of all characters by two times, and a recovery of 1.3. So a pretty bad captain effect when you look at that, but then you have an effect of if you use the Yasakani no Magatama, which is his special ability, in this turn, he would boost the attack of all characters by three times instead. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if Kizaru is your captain, if you got double Kizaru, when you activate the special of one of the Kizarus, it will actually activate it for both Kizaru captains. Meaning that as soon as you activate a special, both of them will become three times captains. In that instance, yeah, that's pretty good, but being a two times attack is pretty bad for most of the time, right? It's pretty bad. And then his special ability, you can see here, he only needed three skill ups and his stage one was actually a three turn cooldown, which is pretty respectable. It means every three turns, you actually can receive his three times captain, but his main special ability at a 17 turn cooldown will change all slots on shooter and slasher characters into matching and recovers 10 times his recovery in HP and 10 hits of random typeless damage to all enemies. So that's pretty cool. The fact that he did a lot of hits, so combo barriers, you could help get through that. Also, recovery was kind of nice to tank more hits. And then also the full board of matching slots, at least he has that. If he didn't have that, this character would have been awful from the jump. The fact that he gives a full board of slots is very good though, because there weren't many characters back when this guy released that would just guarantee you a full board of slots. And this guy does it for two separate classes. So a pretty useful character, but unfortunately didn't see that much play on release. And it definitely took a really long time for this character to actually see play and a lot of the time you would probably just use other characters as your captain rather than this guy because his captain effect was a little wonky definitely a really good sub for slasher and shooter teams as time progressed but remember when pirate rumble first came out this guy was like the goat of pirate rumble for quite a long time and still is to this day a very good character in pirate rumble so having a look at the kind of content that we are going to be playing today we have three separate coliseums we have coliseum foxy coliseum kid the strength one and coliseum sadie now i wanted to select content that was not too difficult for kizaru because he's not he wasn't really used that much as a captain when he first came out so we can't really showcase too much as a captain but i want to go ahead and actually beat something for you guys today so we've selected three coliseums here i think kid will definitely be the most difficult one so if that if we land on that that's going to be really fun but uh we'll see we'll go ahead and spin the wheel a couple times let's see what we get today i'm excited to use kizaru either way but what are we going to be playing against coliseum sadie all right let's go ahead and load it up see what we can do let's get it Actually a really solid unit. This guy actually has a limit break too, but he's not really that ideal. Let's see what our Sugo First Legend's gonna be. Kizaru, yes, that's new. I don't have this guy. Hell yeah, oh my God, okay. So worth, I'm completely fine with that. So worth it, hell yeah, Kizaru, nice. We're back in game now with my man Borsalino, one of the Navy's admirals. He sees issues with Alkiji's devotion to his credo over his orders, as well as Akainu's robot-like faithfulness in missions. Although he acts easygoing, he is capable of mighty fits of rage, once arresting 500 pirates in an act of revenge. I like how some of these uh, older story little tidbits are actually more detailed. The more current ones are a little bit uh, more laissez. But either way, here we have Borsalino, of course. He is uh, not limit bro with max sockets, max special, with plus attack and plus recovery cotton candies because that will allow his special ability that would provide us with a bit of healing to actually heal for more. Now in terms of the crew that we're bringing today against Colosseum Sadie, this is what we're going to go with. We've got Zoro, we've got Cavendish who is going to be very good for the mini boss, at least I think he's going to be good, and then we've got Doflamingo, and I do have Golden Pan Usopp kind of as like a safe 
kind of thing because I'm, I'm not really too sure if that's going to be useful or not but i'm very interested to use kizaru today i don't even remember the last time i ever used this guy as a captain so i'm very interested to use him today so i guess uh without further ado let's jump into the content let's get it and shout out to my girl carissa for putting up her kizaru with uh, no limit break with some sockets also shout out to uh, the lord shira for putting up his kizaru as well greatly appreciate it here we go let's run the set final round versus sadie let's go ahead and get it let's do it i'm pumped all right, let's see what we got working with today. So remember that Kizaru as a captain provides minus one cooldown, and then you've got the minus two cooldown from the uh, sockets, from the sockets, right? So we actually get minus four cooldown at the start of the quest. That means we actually don't have to stall as much, which is really, really good. Um, we are just going to go on our merry way. And remember that, you know, Kizaru only provides a two times captain until you use his special ability. That's when you get access to the three times captain. So we ideally want to have one one special ability for the mini boss stage and we want to have another special ability for the final boss stage so that's my ideology getting into this content here we're actually gonna take a hit here I, I'm pretty sure this guy actually hits pretty hard we'll see yeah that's a pretty decent amount of damage actually he goes down to a three turn cooldown so we're gonna consume these uh, recovery slots actually we want to kill this guy this guy needs to go all right beautiful so we got we got a lot of HP still we have our cooldowns are looking fine, and that's the good thing about Kizaru, man. We're probably not going to have to stall nowhere near as much as we would normally have to do for other pieces of content. A lot of characters when they first released, especially back in 2015, 2016, even 2017, had really high cooldowns for what they were, for their special abilities. I really hated that. Nowadays, it's definitely much more reasonable. Alright, let's see here. Uh, we don't really want to take too much damage. We'll kill these guys here. And there should be a stage coming up sometime soon with a turtle. That'll give us some opportunities to stall. Um, but, I mean, looking at us right now, we just want to make sure... Who has the highest cooldown? Zora does. Um, my ideology is we're going to use Zora for the final boss stage. So, as long as Kizaru is ready by stage 4, that's all I really care about. That's all we should have to worry about. Which, he, he's definitely going to be ready. There's no there's no doubt in my mind that's going to be fine. I mean, the two times attack from Kizaru is pretty bad. But, I mean, at least at least for our burst turns, we're going to be good. We are absolutely flying through this content today. Absolutely flying through it. I didn't want to do damage to accidentally, like, hit the turtle when I didn't want to hit them. Bit of damage to that guy. And Kizaru is almost ready to go. I mean, I'm excited. I'm really excited for these burst turns, dude. Alright, we are gonna move on now. Dude, we are, we're just flying through. It's already been, like, just a couple minutes, and we're already, like, on our, on the boss stages. That is crazy. Shout out to Kizaru for the minus cooldown. Can't wait till we get to Carrot. Carrot's gonna absolutely blow through content. Either way, Battle 4. This is uh, Arlong, one of the mini-bosses here. Okay, I don't know why his health is not all the way full. That's pretty weird. So, he removes our beneficial effects, and he also gives us a minor orb boost. Okay, so... This is where I'm going to start activating some special abilities. Okay, first thing is first, we're going to activate this guy, uh, Cavendish. Uh, Cavendish, we actually showcased not that long ago. Really interesting character, actually, and works very well for slasher teams against strength bosses. So we're going to use him to um, remove our beneficial effects. Actually, you know what would have been interesting as well? I kind of wish that we had Int... Uh, into Mihawk on this team. That probably would have made it a lot easier. But either way, we've used um, the, the Cavendish to remove beneficial effects and he gives himself like huge, huge damage buffs. Uh, let's use Kizaru right here now, which is going to go ahead and give us that three times attack multiplier as a captain. But it also heals us, it does damage to the enemy, and it gives us the full board of matching slots to our shooter and our slasher characters. So at this point here, I want to attack. But the thing is, I am kind of worried that like, if we don't kill him, that's going to be really bad. So I'm going to use the Golden Pound Usopp special as well, just to make sure that we get the delay off. So even if we don't kill him, he doesn't like kill us, right? So let's do damage and uh, hopefully get the W. Let's go. Let's kill this guy. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, I really wish I had Int Mihawk instead. That probably would have worked out a lot better because we could have used Int Mihawk special right here, wiped the floor with all the mobs, would have been way better. But anyways, I actually can't remember what Sadie actually does. So it gives an attack buff to all of the enemies. That kind of sucks. See, it would have been nice to have Golden Pound Usopp here as well, but I wasn't too sure if we're actually going to kill Arlong in one turn. So that was kind of just like a, a safety net. So we definitely want to go ahead and use the Kizaru special, which is going to give us the full board of matching slots once again. Hopefully the Kizaru special is actually able to knock out some of these enemies here. We'll see. How much damage do we do here? 
Okay, not as much as I would have hoped, unfortunately. Um, we definitely want to target Sadie, though, because Sadie's going to be a bit of a problem. It is a shame that a lot of these guys are on a uh, one-turn cooldown. We want to do some damage here as well. Zoro... Yeah, he doesn't really, he doesn't do damage to the enemy, but he does give us an attack boost, a 1.75 times attack boost. And at least in the next turn, we actually can use the friend captain Kizaru special, which will give us the three times multiplier again. And then Doflamingo is going to give us the orb boost. And we don't really want to swap any of these slots around because they are perfect just the way they are. Now, I definitely want to kill this guy, but how do we target Sadie? Sadie's at the back. Hmm, Sadie, Sadie is going to be a bit of a problem. I do want to target this guy, because I think if this guy stays alive, he blinds us, so that's a bit of a problem too. Ah, oh, man, this is tough. All these guys on such high cooldowns, or low cooldowns, should I say. I don't know how we want to do this. All right, I think what we're going to do is, is we are just going to kill this cannoneer guy and basically hope for the best, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go! Let's go! Dude, I was so... Oh my god, we nearly died. Okay, so... <laughs> that was so close. Holy... Oh my god, dude. Uh, we should... If we had Golden Panthers off for this stage, it was over. But, I mean, I'm glad we did it the way that we did it. We got the dub. Let's go. Alright, let's go ahead and use the Kizara special once again. This is the stage 1 special, but it will still give us that 3 times multiplier. Um, at stage 1, I believe it just uh, will randomly shuffle slots, or like, it'll keep your, your matching slots. Yeah, it keeps your matching slots, but shuffles your other slots around for your Slasher and Shooter characters. Uh, so luckily, we, we, we did get another, another slot there, but it's fine. We're just going to go ahead and attack and uh, get the dub. There we go. So Borsalino absolutely wiped the floor with that Colosseum. Sadie isn't a really difficult Colosseum, but you know, it's still awesome to actually use a character that is so, so old in, in content. Just to go back in time and use these characters again, man. I love, I love this series. And I really love the fact that you guys are also enjoying this series just as much as me. It's so much fun. And with all of that being said, that is going to wrap up yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. And in next week's episode, we are going to be covering my man V1 Aokiji Kuzan. So, you know, going along the same lines of all the admirals, Aokiji is next in line. So I'm very excited to use him as well. Another very intriguing admiral unit. And uh, he's going to be really, really strong. I really can't wait to, to use him in content. Another character I haven't used in a really, really long time. But as I said, that is going to wrap up up yet another one piece treasure cruise video today hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video